So thanks for tuning into the channel this week. So we are in St. Louis, Missouri at the 31st annual No-Till Conference. I came 11 years ago, learned a lot, still use some of the practices on my farm. So this week's video, we're just gonna show you some stuff we do for uh, cover crop on our farm. I don't have very many answers, but I know every year our soil gets a little better. I get more excited and more excited about the, the job we're doing. Our crops seem to get a little better. Last year we were extremely dry and our crops still did pretty well. So follow along, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, we'll see if this can't be a decent video for you. Hopefully you learn a little something. So I made it back from St. Louis at the no-till conference. So I don't want to confuse anybody. We don't do a lot of no-till. We strip till for field corn almost always. We strip till for our edible beans, our black beans. And we strip till for our soybeans. Usually some of the time we no-till on the gravel ground. We tried some 15-inch uh, rows of the Kinsey planter last year. Worked pretty good. We had a little slug damage in one field. So we do a little bit of hybrid of everything. We no-till all our wheat. And we no-till our cover crops in. After wheat stubble in the summer, we use a four-way mix. In the fall after soybeans, what doesn't go into wheat that's going to be harvested gets uh, winter wheat just straight drilled on. And the same with corn stalks. If we get there early enough, we like to put some winter wheat on. Uh, we just go in and drill that on the corn stalks. And then the next spring, that'll go to soybeans or dry beans. So um, we're trying. So watch these videos. They're a little bit disjointed. Where we had cover crop wheat, where we planted black beans this year. I don't know if the beans were a lot better. The yield monitor didn't show a big improvement in the yield, but we saw a huge improvement in weed control. It was so dry. From Father's Day for four weeks, we had one-tenth of an inch of rain. For some reason, the wheat cover crop kept the weeds down, almost weed-free. Where we didn't have a cover crop, we had some lambs quarters escape, and they were six foot tall. So there are definitely some benefits to having cover crops. We believe in them. We're going to update some equipment. We have updated some equipment this winter. So in a week or two, I'll do a video about the equipment we use to help us get our cover crops in, what we're going to do in the future to do it better. And we're talking about doing some controlled traffic. So try to follow along in this disjointed YouTube video. And we'll, uh, if you got any questions or anything, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. What works on your farm? So it's a little hard to tell. But this was, uh, this is no-till, this is wheat stubble. We had a radish cover crop mix with oats, Austrian winter peas, and some clover. And uh, man, it's working up nice. This ground is too stony to really do tillage work on, but uh, looks like we're getting a good seed bed. I just wonder what we should be putting down for population. Any suggestions with 15 intros? Farming sub bitch here. So today we're getting some black bean ground ready. I apologize for the wind. So this ground here has got cover crop wheat on it. Sprayed it a couple weeks ago. It's not real tall, but it was pretty thick. It was pretty nice. So this ground is working up really, really nice. And then next to it, we've got a strip that didn't have much cover crop. It was just broadcast on. This is working up well two but we're gonna see which one gets us better black beans the wheat in theory is gonna hold the moisture if it gets really good and dry um, it always gets dry some point in western New York and we always get too much rain in western New York so it's gonna be interesting to see if it, the wheat side or the side it was just broadcast doesn't have much and some of the field it's hard to tell behind me didn't really get any cover crop because it got too wet and too late to put it on but uh, we're always experimenting, always learning, and uh, when we get to harvest, hopefully the yield monitor will show us the cover crop uh, paid off this year. So here's the finished product in the black bean field. We planted these Monday, day after Father's Day, and it's been hot and dry. We're hoping the corn residue and the wheat residue is going to hold the moisture. So these little buggers are tough. They've already germinated. The little necks are right there. Whoops. Um... So they're gonna be they're gonna be coming along in a few days. We got pretty good moisture down in a little ways. Um, like I say, we're hoping the residue is gonna hold the moisture. The old no-till beans planted in the cover crop and wheat stubble, planted with the Kinsey 3500, are looking exceptional. 
It's super dry, but they look good. Great night to feed the world. So these soybeans were uh, planted with our new Kinsey 15 inch row planter. Uh, new to us, I should say. So this ground is very rocky, very gravelly. So what we did is the last, while well, we started farming this ground in 2016, we pretty much have tried to no-till it every year. A lot of our ground we strip till, but this ground is so rocky, it's just tough to work up. So we've been using a cover crop mix that's across the street. I'll show you a little bit of that. And then we no-till into that. So this ground had oats, a little bit of volunteer wheat, radish, clover, and Austrian winter peas. And uh, we come in here and no-tilled it this spring. We went about four weeks without any rain. So even though these poor little beans are short, now look at that one, it's, ra well, it's rained so much that that pod there just split right open and the beans fell out as I touched it. So, um, yep, there's another one, they're splitting out. So hopefully tomorrow we'll get them off, but 11th of November, and I'm just doing a cover crop update. So these, these cover crops, this mix was planted the 20th of August. So in this field, we had, this was winter wheat. We combined in July. We sprayed it to kill the weeds. We come back in, we broadcast some oats. We put Austrian winter peas out here, clover, crimson clover that is, and radishes. So here's one of the radishes. Look how good these things did. That thing is, oh man, a couple inches in diameter. If, if I dug it up, that thing would be, I'll probably end up breaking it off. But the, uh, you can see some peas, you can see some clover. Last year, we had a drought this past season. Some of the best crops we grew were behind this cover crop mix. Um, I can't get that bugger out of the ground, it's in so deep. So we just, we love cover crops, they cover the ground. We just had about a foot of snow, it's melting off now, but I think everything is finally dead. The, 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 the oats will quit growing. The clover will come back a little in the spring. We'll have to kill that, but the radishes will be dead. The oats will be dead. And uh, we'll no-till soybeans into this ground most likely. And they're, it's just, they're going to do phenomenal. So very happy with this year's cover crops again. So this here radish is one I was trying to pull by hand. This ground's real gravelly. This radish, focus, focus, was growing around a stone. Look at all them hairs on those roots. Look how deep that taproot is. So that's a long radish. So we're hoping it's a lot of biomass. It's going to recycle nutrients. Every place these grow, it'll be a place where uh, soybean roots can grow in the spring. And this ground is going to be protected. The microorganisms are going to work all winter underneath this, uh, this mat. Most of this stuff will die over winter. Next spring, we'll come in here. Burn, hit it with a little burn down and a few days later plant it to beans put the fertilizer on top and grow some great beans hopefully so it's veterans day the 11th of november so we're out here i'm calling this my poor man's vertical tillage so we got our no-till drill we're drilling in this was corn after corn so you can see last year's corn stalks here here's this year's rows so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to drive on the fresh corn stalks. Next year, this is going to be black beans. We're going to zone build between the corn rows. So we're drilling on a couple bushel of winter wheat. And the drill is putting these stalks down. So we're getting some good seed or uh, soil contact with the residue. So this will help break it down. We usually don't put our black beans in until the middle of June. So we're hoping the weed will grow. We'll, we'll spread, uh, spray it with Roundup a week or two before. This year, our best black beans were where the wheat got up old, oh, probably 18 inches high. Had the best weed control and it worked well, but you gotta do it before the ground dries out too bad. If it's super dry, we'll spray it earlier. But this, uh, this old no-till drill is doing a pretty good job of, I'll call it, processing the residue. So 100% chance of rain here in a couple hours. We're going to get up to a couple inches in the next 24 hours. So we're going to try to burn over this field. It's Veterans Day. Thank you, veterans. And uh, up on the hill there, we had winter wheat. We put a cover crop mix of oats, wheat, clover, and radishes. That did extremely well. That'll probably be black beans as well. This year, our best corn was where we planted uh, behind a cover crop. 
that was wheat stubble the year before and had the oats, clover, wheat, and uh, radish mix. So the old drill's got 17,000 acres on her. She's a little tired, kind of like me. But we finished harvesting corn last night, seven o'clock on this farm, and we're gonna get over as much of it as we can before it rains, and uh, it's been a great week to feed the world. So, uh, yep, thanks for following along. We'll show you some more cover crop footage here sometime. So in closing, even though we don't no-till a lot, I would like to say that our friends that do the no-till conference, and well, next year's gonna be in Indianapolis, do a phenomenal job. There's so many great speakers, there's classrooms, there's round tables. I hope to be a presenter there someday. I had a lot of fun, learned a lot. It's got me thinking. I took pages of notes from the speakers that were there. So we're gonna try some new things on the farm. We'll let you know how they go. So thanks for watching and following, and uh, we'll talk to you next week.